All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Main Point. It is so good to see you all again. It's good to be back. I had a wonderful time last weekend with my boys mountain biking, but uh, I was blessed to be able to tune in and hear Kervin's message. And I understand that Lynn did a did a wonderful job. Did he not? Mm -hmm. So we'll give him a round of applause. <laughs> since since he's sitting out at the cabin somewhere in Western PA. Uh, tuning in, let's give him a wave and a shout. Hey, Lynn. What's up, Lynn? Miss you, big guy. Did you hear that, Lynn? He called you big guy. <laughs> All right. And uh, also, last Saturday, the guys went down to Kensington. I, did, I didn't get a big report on that, but it was a little slower this time, a little quieter. But that's okay. There were some good connections made, right? So if that's something that anyone would like to, uh, to join in, uh, let us know. And uh, we'll be going down again the third week of November. If anyone would like to help support that, it takes about $150 to $200 every, every month for supplies. Uh, let us know. Lynn, myself, Tony, Kervin, let any one of us know that uh, if you'd be interested in helping or helping to support that. Uh, tonight, um, oh, also one more... One more uh, one more announcement. Uh, this Wednesday, we'll, we will again have our, our weekly prayer meeting. Uh, this is something that we've been doing about two doors up from here. Uh, the address is 110 East Main Street. This is a men's prayer meeting, a campfire prayer meeting. So uh, it's been a blessing. We've been having about seven to nine guys, and uh, it's just a real blessed time coming together and standing in the gap for our community and for one another, for our families, our friends. Uh, so it's, it's a really... It's a really wonderful time. So invite, it's an open invite for, it's a men's campfire prayer meeting. Every Wednesday at seven o'clock, 110 East Main Street. Or reach out to me if you're interested in that. All right, I'm gonna invite Mike up here. Come on up here, Mike. Mike, I didn't catch your last name. Geezy. Geezy, yep. Geezy, yep. Yes. So this is Mike Geezy, everyone. Let's welcome Mike. Yeah, Mike. Mike, Mike is going to come up here. He's going to introduce our guest speaker tonight. So, so yours, Mike. All righty. Well, our guest speaker is uh, Tim Hussman. Um, he's sitting right over here, and um, we're very proud of him. And my part that I want to do is I want to do it in two parts. Um, me being the first part, and. Uh, our family is behind Tim very much, and uh, I want to thank the Lord for uh, everyone coming here and being able to be here and and help each other. It's very, very important. And um, we, I'm going to say, we have been with Tim since the start of all of this. And... Uh, In part two of my introduction to Tim is if I could uh, invite Steve Garber up here to say a word or two. Right. Uh, Steve has been involved in this just as much as I have as a family member. Mm -hmm. And um, welcome, Steve. Thank you. I don't get in front of people very often. I don't like to be in front of people very often. <laughs> That's why yeah. I didn't tell you about it. <laughs> I appreciate that. That was, that was merciful. It was very merciful. But uh, no, we've been, we've been rooting for Tim for a long time. And uh, I don't know if he always felt like we were rooting for him, but we were. And, uh, but uh, we just, it's, just, it's just a real joy to my heart. When you see someone that Satan wanted to throw on the dust and trash heap, and you just you just watch it, and it's almost like you could you could see the truck coming, and you know if nothing took it off course, it's going to crash. And we just saw God reach into Tim's life and, and change it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise and God. Change it. And we're all we're all in that situation. Yeah. Would you say that it took a little bit of tough love sometimes for Tim? No. 
A lot of tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, Derek, I wonder if we could, um, do you know what they're talking about? Uh, Requiring uh, some tough love for 10 years. I'd be the fifth. Okay. <laughs> My lawyers told me not to divulge it. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Tim. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Yeah. All right. He, I'm sure he almost felt like sometimes that we didn't love him, but we did it for his own good. Amen. And good job. And I think he learned by that and uh, made him a better person. That's right. It was very much needed, so now that I look back. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, us two old parks, we're not going to bore anybody any longer. <laughs> so, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, before I open up, I want to just open up the time of prayer before I go into this. Man, if you please bow your head. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time, Lord, that we could gather and just give you praise and glory, honor. And I just pray that um, your spirit will just give me the words to touch and every, every one of this, these men's hearts this evening, Lord. And just give me the, the proclamations, Lord, to declare what you have done in my life, to yes. break me from the, the bondage of sin, Lord, and for making me free, Lord, all because of your grace and because of your mercy in my life, Lord. I thank you for each and every one of my family members that are here and also here on the Facebook Live that can watch and see the transformation has taken place because of what your son has done in my life, Lord. And so I just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So the song that I played, Theocracy, Return to Dust, that every time I hear that song, I think of, you know, first of all, what Jesus Christ has done at the cross and that. You know, we don't return to dust. You know, we go to be with our Heavenly Fathers forever and ever. And so, you know, I always have um, just, you know, it's, it's encouragement hearing that song because for the longest time I thought, okay, you know, once I die, it's over. But now that I know that I'm going to be seated, you know, with, with my Father in Heaven and being the glory of glories, that just brings so much Amen. joy and hope to me. And I just, you know, I just, why I chose that song. So, Amen. but um, anyway, before I get into my story, I just wanted to, I wanted to share something that, I read from every day. The, the book is called uh, Battle Prayers, and something that I uh, read along with my devotions every morning. And something that really uh, caught my attention here in the, this one chapter is called Produce Endurance. And it says here, Lord God, you are my only hope. You are the strength of my heart and everything I will ever need. When I consider the assorted lessons you work in my life, I realize that you're intent on developing endurance in me. You want me to remain steadfast when everyone around me is wilting around under pressure. When the day of evil comes, you want me having done everything to stand. And then um, I jump down here and it says, you know, so this, is, this really speaks volumes, especially in my life. Is, it says, my greatest consola consolation is knowing you will never allow me to endure more than I can handle. When I reach my breaking point, you provide a way of escape. So I wait in patient expectations in your divine intervention. I trust in your goodness and wisdom, knowing you're a great mean to the man of God you desired me to be. So... <clears throat> And, uh, you know, when I, when I think about endurance and, you know, the things that God has brought me through, I think that is something above all else that he has taught me, especially now that I've, you know, am able to be here and say that, you know, I've been redeemed by Jesus and everything he has brought me through. Because as you'll hear in my story, I've gone through trial after trial. And for me to be standing here and say, hey, I'm giving all the credit to Jesus Everyone else would be like, looking at me like, you, you got to be crazy, you know, why aren't you out ripping and running, you know, and getting high like you used to, but, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm here. So, anyway, I'm, you know, my name's Tim Usman. I'm the oldest of three brothers. I got two younger brothers. I was uh, raised up for the most part in Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. I moved there shortly after I turned nine years old. But before that, my, uh, my mother and father, we moved all down through the south because my uh, father, he was an airplane mechanic, and so he would get jobs at different airports throughout the, or throughout the south. And we found ourselves moving probably like every year or so until um, we finally found a place. I think, I think it was Atlanta where we had, he finally found a job where he was able to find a secure place. And um, up until that point, you know, I, my, both my parents were Christians. My mother was, you know, she, she loved the Lord with all her heart. And, she wanted the same for the, my two brothers as well as myself. However, shortly after I turned seven years old, we got the news that my mother 
had been diagnosed with um, breast cancer. And at that time, I didn't understand the severity of that disease and, you know, what it could do to somebody. And so I just thought, oh, well, you know, my mother's six, you know, she's going to get through this and everywhere else. And, you know, my family came around me at that age and said, oh, you know, you know, Jesus is going to, you know, heal her from this and that's this and that. And, you know, I, I saw her suffer for, it was a good two to three years. And we took her to every big name hospital in the country. And, you know, the doctors really just couldn't find anything to really um, treat her cancer that she had and just continue to spread through her body. So, you know, shortly after my my ninth birthday, um, my, my family kind of told me, they said, hey, your mother is probably going to pass away. And so, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be really hard on your brothers and I because we, we didn't really know what to do from that point. My, my youngest brother, I think he was two years old at that time, so I don't even think he had any recollection who my mother was at that point. And um, so, you know, I, after that, you know, I just, my, I was nine years old. I remember it was shortly after my birthday that you know my mom had passed away. She had lung cancer at the final stages of what she had been battling. And from that point, really the seed of doubt had been planted in my heart because you know I went to Sunday school every single morning for years and years. I heard about how Jesus healed the blind, and healed the sick, and you know He was able to do all these things. And I, I took a step back. And I was like, well, you know, why hasn't Jesus healed my mother? Why I have to lose my mother at eight years old? And so. From that point on, I kind of had this, this, this. I don't, I don't want to say resentment towards God, but I just didn't believe the things that He said He could do. And so, up until my preteen age, I, you know, I, I just got caught up with the wrong crowd. I chased women and got really caught up in the party scene. I was really involved in sports in high school. I played football and soccer, and um, I, soon after my graduation, I had the desire to go up get um, technical um, training to go become a recording artist. And so I went to Gatesburg Academy of Technical Arts to get a degree in that. And from there, I, you know, I didn't really have any direction because I, I didn't really know what God's will was for my life. I had been hear, heard, hearing about it for years and years and hearing all these services of, you know, how to find, you know, how God can move in your life and give you direction. But I just, I didn't really see it as something that was really a part of who I was because I identified with the crowd that, you know, just chased destruction and partying and everything else. And, you know, God gave me a wake up call soon after my 18th birthday because it was, I think, yeah, it was 19. I was, I had a really bad case of mono the one summer and the girl I was dating at the time, she was like, oh, you should probably go get this checked out. And sure enough, you know, we went to go see an oncologist and they discovered I had non Hodgkin's lymphoma which I was, I was completely blown out. You know, I was like, how, how can this possible? You know, how, you know, I lost my mother to cancer, and now here I am myself dealing with the same disease. And so they said, you know, we're probably gonna put you on three rounds of chemo, and you know, you should be all right. You know, I had to go through CT scans every three to four months. And <clears throat> so, you know, I, I kinda, I don't wanna say I cried out to God, but I kind of knew that he was gonna get me through that disease because they found I had cancer in an early stage, and I, I kind of knew that, you know, I was going to get through it, even though, you know, my life was kind of on the line at the time. But I had, you know, I was young. I was, you know, I was really persevering at the time, and I thought, oh, well, this is nothing. And it's kind of funny now because I think back, and the nurse that was giving me my infusions for chemo every week, she would come in and say, you know, you've you've been in chemo for the last four months, and you've been taking this pretty well. And I was like, well. I was like, well, one, I'm unstoppable, and two, I think God's going to get me through this. Not really thinking that, you know, I really didn't have any faith in Christ at that point. I just thought, it was like, you know, God's not done with me. You know, I'm not going to, you know, lose my life to cancer here at 19. And so, you know, praise the glory. You know, I went to remission soon after my 21st birthday. So, I, you know, I just, I just give all the praise to God because no, not a lot of people can stand up and say, hey, I'm a survivor of cancer. So for God to get me through that, I just... It's amazing because cancer has been something that's really been prevalent in my family for so long, and I, you know, for me to, to come and say, hey, you know, God got me through that, and at the time I really didn't think much of it at that time, and um, but um, so going forward, you know, a lot of people would think, you know, you went through cancer, you know, that must have been a humbling experience, and you know, you probably wanted to 
you know, give thanks to God for, you know, saving your life and everything, but I had this headstrong desire just to really hit the road running because I'm like, you know, I'm going to get back at God for trying to set me back and trying to take my life rather than, you know, being thankful for, you know, helping me get through that disease. And so, you know, shortly after my 21st birthday, I just, I completely threw my faith out the door and I just chased partying like, like no other. And um, during this time, my father was struggling with his own addiction and, and he was, had just been, he came out his first term of being in prison for four years. And I remember him being home for my 21st birthday. And shortly after that, you know, my grandmother had said, hey, you know, you're probably, your father's probably going to return to prison. But I didn't know how bad it was going to be at this time. And so, you know, he, he you know, he kind of kept what was going on with him under keeps for so long. And, you know, um, I just, it was hard to struggle because I, I was close with my father growing up. You know, after my mother passed away, I, me and my father really, you know, we really got along. So, you know, he... To hear that he was going to prison for a very long time after my 21st birthday, that kind of crushed me and really took the wind down my sails because, you know, I, you know, he instilled a work ethic into me when I was younger. He, he brought me along to everything that I had done in sports and everything. He was my coach when I was in football and I just, you know, hearing about that, that really took everything from me. And I went through the rest of my 20s, you know, trying to find whatever kind of satisfaction I could. I I just got my alcoholism at that point was, especially after I turned 21, I didn't, I didn't really get into alcohol until I had turned 21 because I just didn't think the, the cost of getting caught with an underage was worth it. So after I turned 21, I, I started using drinking, I started getting opiates and everything else. And <clears throat> it was really after like 27, 28, when I uh, really started using mixing meth with alcohol, that's when destruction had really taken its toll on my life. And I didn't realize how many people and how many family members I was hurting at that point because I had I had a grandmother, well I was, I was raised, let me, let me take a step back. I was, I was raised by my grandparents for the most part. You know, after my mother passed away, we went to go live with my grandparents and my grandmother, she was on fire for the Lord. And she, to, to see the pain I brought into her life, really, you know, it, it, it goes to show that God's love abounds above all else because if, if she hadn't been a Christian I don't really don't think I think she would have cut me out of her life altogether with the amount that she put up with me and, and you know my ignorance and my pride and everything else and um, so anyway so yeah, back to what I was saying my um, yeah when I started mixing meth, meth and alcohol that really was just destroying my life and um, this was probably around, I was like 20, 29. I was dating this chick that I really shouldn't have been with. There was red flags all over the place. And, you know, next thing I know, you know, she had gotten pregnant with my, my first child. Um, this was a, April 2019. My son was born. He's uh, four and a half right now. And, you know, I've, I've always looked up to being a father, but I knew that I wasn't ready to be a father at that point because I knew that, you know, while being an alcoholic and being so deep in my drug addiction, I couldn't be in a place to really be there for a child and, you know, be an example, you know, to, to raise him in a way that's going to be healthy for him. And, you know, next thing I know, I'm getting myself involved in breaking the law and everything else. And I'm, as you can say, as many people say, find myself in the castle for 13 months. Oh, the castle. Yeah, the old castle. <laughs> <laughs> so I... You know, I never thought, I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'll never, gonna, I'll avoid the law with everything I do. I'll never get caught. And, you know, sure enough, I'm sitting waiting to get sentenced, you know, to go upstate. And, you know, while this, this is happening, my grandmother had been diagnosed with cancer at this time, which I, of all times that for this to happen, it was, I can't believe that happened because I, I would call Mike and, you know, my aunt and everything else and try to check out on how she's doing. And, you know, like, I just, just tell grandma that, I really want to change and you know her prayer was for me to give my life to the Lord but I just I didn't have a desire to chase God's heart at that time like I knew I needed to change my life like you know getting to prison was one thing but I just I was just so hard-headed at that time that I just need something that God could do in my life to say hey you know I, I love you more than anything else and I have a plan for you 
and it took a good two, two, two and a half years because I, you know, I sat in the county for 13 years. I went upstate for three, and after that, I, I, I needed, I needed, I needed people around me to support me in my faith because coming, you know, when you're in prison, people just laugh at you when you're, you know, trying to live for Christ. They, they think it is a gimmick of you trying to get through your sentence and this and that, and I kind of really didn't take it seriously because I kind of tried to keep an ego when I was in prison and you know I tried to be the baddest person on the block and this and that and that got me nowhere and so you know I, I contacted my relatives and said hey I need to get myself into a program the day I get out of prison because or else I'm going to get back to the th doing the things that I you know got me caught up in this mess in the first place so they reached out to uh, the Potter's house and um, actually the first place they reached out was this place in New Jersey was the Colony of Mercy and because of my parole, they weren't going to allow me to, to go out of state. So we looked to the Potter's House to get me into that program. And you know, God willing, he opened a door that was allowed me to, to get there the day I got released. And I remember, I remember me getting released. You know, Steve and Beth came and picked me up. And, you know, I was so overwhelmed with my freedom and everything. And they said, well, I was like, oh, we're going to go out and do something and everything. And they said, no, we're taking you right to the Potter's House. And, you know, as much as I wanted to you know, explore being, you know, free from imprisonment and everything. I knew I needed to be in a place where I was accountable for my actions and to be surrounded by people that were going to lead me in the way of, you know, walking with the Lord. So that was uh, July of actually last year was when I got released. And that was the last day I, that, yeah, actually, that, that was the last day I used. So I've been free from alcohol and drugs for almost two and a half years. Mm. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You know, So, you know, I, I went to the Paris house for three months. Um, I had a really hard ego I had to break while I was there, and things didn't really work out when I was at the Paris house. And so, um, one of the um, instructors there at the Paris house, they reached out to Restart, which is another program that's similar to the Paris house, and they, hey, I think, you know, Tim would be better fit if he moved over there. This, yeah, this was about three months while I was in the Paris house. And so I moved over to Restart, and through there, what Pastor Jaime had taught me there and the people and the, the activities that we got involved, that's where I really poured my heart out to God because I was like, okay, God, I'm, I'm completely broken. I don't know what to do at this point. You know, I, I have every desire to get back in my son's life, and I know you want me to be patient and to really pursue you with everything that I got. And I found that out when I was at Restart, and it, I just am so thankful for Every, everyone who's came around me in that time because I, there was a lot of things that I struggled with, uh, you know, not only drug addiction, but just, you know, just taking account, like we were talking about earlier, the things that you're working through and the things that are helping you move through your faith. And, you know, the, um, I, j I needed that in my life because so many times I would go forward and say, oh, you know, I got this. I'm, I'm good at where I'm at, but I really need to to reach out to Christ and say, hey, I, I need to struggle with this. I need help with whatever I'm going through. And, you know, to have brothers in Christ such as yourself, you know, that's really what got me Amen. to a point where I can say, hey, you know, I'm, I've been able to overcome these things because of these people and them just continue to point me in the way of uh, the Lord. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, I just, you know, going back to the, oh, I, I completely forgot, you know, my, I know I talked about my grandmother, you know, battling cancer when I was in prison. And, you know, one of the things I, I told her, you know, because, you know, I, she, she, she had a, she wanted to be there to see that I gave my life back to Christ. She's like, you know, if I go to be with, you know, my Heavenly Father, I want to see that you, you know, finally rededicate your life to Christ because I've been praying about that for the last 15 years. And she said, you know, that would really make me be at peace to see that because my two brothers, they, you know, they really didn't get into all, you know, drugs and alcohol and such as, you know, they have a, they both have two beautiful families and kids that of their own. And um, my grandmother, she just stuck by with me and with tooth and nail. And I just am so glad that for everything that she's done in my life, because I, you know, she was basically a mother to me. And so for her to continue to, to show the love of Jesus to me, should, you know, allow me to see that, you know, not only it's, you know, God, wanting to you know, pursue each and every one of us, but it's something that I can give back now to myself, you know, back to my kids, back to my friends, and back to my family. And I, you know, I ask that every single God, I was like, you know, God, give me, 
give me the, the way to care and to share it to people that you know that you care about them and that's something I would have never thought I would be doing you know because I was always the one you know trying to you know maneuver my way and try to make my way and get you know on top of everything and that's that's something that's completely changed you know all praise glory to God because I you know it all had to start in a place and you know it started in a place where I was completely broken just reaching out to the Lord and asking how he was going to you know get me forward in life so <clears throat> yeah so anyway back to when I was at restart I I graduated this past was it this past April I was there for six months and um you know as you know going forward you know pastor pastor I mean he really came alongside me and you know set set up steps for me to really become successful as a Christian and um you know, leaving that program, you know, I was able to, I had a, I've, I've always been prone to working with mechanics and engineering and stuff like that. And after I graduated from the program, I was like, hey, God, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice if I could get a mechanic shop and this and that. And I, you know, tried to get everywhere I could. And then, you know, finally, thing, doors were just closing left and right. And so I said, okay, God, wh where do you, what do you want me to do? Because obviously nothing's working out. And then, you know, lo and behold, um, Derek, well, I, I think I reached out to Derek and I said, hey, I, I really need some work. You know, um, the, the hours I'm getting right now ain't working and, you know, God is obviously trying to lead me somewhere else and this might be where it's at. And um, so, you know, I've, I've been working with him, I think, for four or five months now, something like that. And, you know, I, 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 never, I never thought I'd be a painter. I was like, because I, I, I did painting with my dad when I was like a teenager, but I'm like this is this is the most boring thing in the world. Why would somebody want to paint? <laughs> oh my, how those words! Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I'm, I'm taking enjoyment. I, I actually I actually do like the work. It's you know it keeps me moving. I've learned a lot over the last couple of months, and you know I'm it, I've been the, you know God's really taught me content me. At, and in this time I've been with, you know, working with Derek and, um, you know, I just, I'm at peace of where I'm at and that's something I can, you know, I'm glad to say because there's so many times I'm like, oh, I'm, because I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm a, I was an adrenaline junkie for the longest time. So if something became complacent in my life, I was like, okay, I got to find my next fix. I got to find something else to give me that rush. But I don't find that doing painting and it's something where I can come into work every day and I can be like, hey, I could see myself doing this for years on end and that's not something I can say with any other job I've had because I'm like, oh, I'll be here for a couple months and try to find something else. So, you know, I think that, that, that was definitely a hard change that God had put in me because that definitely didn't come on my own. And so, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, so the, you know, I, I, you know, I've been working here with, you know, Derek for a couple months and uh, testing my faith really came up this past, this past summer. And, you know, it's, it's heart wrenching to even talk about right now. And I, I shared with this with Floyd earlier, but, um, my father got diagnosed with cancer this past, was it this past last fall? It was, he had spine cancer and he had been battling it while he was in prison. And, you know, my heart went out to him. I was like, I can't believe that, you know, you're battling this well. You know, being in a federal prison and this and that, and you know, I was like, you know, I, I really hope that I can see the day you get released and that I can see our relationship get restored. And you know, the Lord had different plans, and I think my my father had more of a desire to be with God. He had given his life to Christ, and I just I I, I just couldn't find my place to to be at peace with that because I was like, God, please allow me to see my father again outside of the prison walls. That's something. I prayed about for years, and he he supported me my entire time when I was upstate. He, you know, he was able to send me letters, which you're actually you're, now that I think about it, you're not even supposed to write other inmates when you're in prison. But you know, thanks to my family members, we were able to. What they used to call it, we used to call it boomerang, where you would send a letter out to your family members and then send it out to another prison. And I was able to keep in contact with him during the years I was in, incarcerated, and he just continued to point me in Bible verses and say. You know, God has a plan for your life. Just, you know, continue to stick to it and make sure that, you know, you just give back to others. And, you know, after I heard about how severe his cancer had gotten, I just, I, I just said, I was like, Lord, you know, why are you allowing me to go through this? I've, you know, I've completely given my life up to you. And now you're putting me through this time of a storm where I'm, I'm wanting to grow in my faith, but this is going to be such a hindrance. And I see it as a, now as a time of work. God had really 
broken free in my life or my relationship with him is ten times stronger than it was, say, three months ago because of that. To, to, to say, you know, you know, I, that you know, losing my father after not having a mother around and saying I am closer with Jesus Christ is absolutely astonishing because who, who can say, you know, that they lose a family member like that and say I've been drawn closer to Christ because of that. And I remember the exact time and place of when even the news was broken up to me because I was, I was on the way to work and I got the call from the chaplain there at the prison that he was at. And, you know, they said, you know, your father passed away this morning and, and we wanted to just offer our condolences for, for you and your, your brothers. And, you know, after I got off the phone with the chaplain, I said, you know, I really don't feel like going to work this day. Like, I'm just going to call my boss up and just take the day to myself. But, you know, I was, you know, I, I, I got on the phone with Derek. Actually, Derek was the first person I called after I, I found out about my father. And, you know, thankfully, you know, he, gave, he told me what I needed to hear was, you know, he's like, you really need to be at work because I don't want to see you go on, do something you're going to later regret because, you know, I care about you and, you know, I know this is really hard for your time, you know, hard for you and, you know, besides the point, you know, you're the best painter I have at the company. <laughs> something along those lines. <laughs> 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 but, 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 uh, <laughs> that was good, Tim. That was okay. good. <laughs> no, but, you know, anyway, you know, I, I made it to work and, you know, <laughs> Wait, you can't even keep straight. You could have left that part out. <laughs> that was good. What was that thing you were saying about ego? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, but he, he was right though, because you know, when we when we start to ponder upon the things that bring us discomfort, that's been the place where the enemy tries to attack us. You know, so for me to to stick through it and get through another day of work on the day that my father passed away, you know, that's something that I needed. And, you know, the weeks following, you know, he knows, well, Derek knows how it was hard for me to get through that because I'd be calling every other day like, hey, I want to go get high. Hey, I want to go drink and do this and that. And to hear him continue to say, hey, no, I, I, I care about you. You know, God has a plan for you. Don't throw it away over something, something stupid, especially you knowing that your father is going to be is seated with Jesus right now, you know, that's something that you can look forward to, to knowing that you're going to see your father again one day. So, you know, the last couple of months has been, you know, it's been a, a difficulty grieving the loss of, of him and, you know, our, my family have come around me to, to support myself as well as my two brothers, but, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm just amazed that God has been able to get me through that and I can stand here and still actually be at peace to know that you know, God is greater than anything we can do. You know, Jesus Christ conquered death at the cross. So, you know, nothing that the enemy can throw at me is going to throw me off of my guard. And since now that my foundation is in Christ, you know, I, I, I really believe that anything I face going forward isn't going to shake me because, you know, losing my father, I th really thought that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. But, let you know, God's power got me through that. And so... I just am so grateful to, to be here and be like, hey, you know, there's encouragement, there's absolute joy in knowing that, you know, through our trials we can, you know, cry out to him to know that he cares for each and every one of us. And so, you know, I, I really don't want to end this on a, you know, a sad note, you know, sharing about that, but I, I really want to let everyone know that, you know, through the, the hardships that we go through and there's times where, you know, you're discouraged or you're seeking things that were, you know, you really think it's impossible to get through. You know, God is our refuge, and all we have That's to do right. is just take shelter in that. And that took me the longest time to realize because I thought that I could do everything myself. I thought, you know, I had the solutions to everything, and, you know, I would find a way out. But, you know, God has a place of peace, and all we have to do is just be still okay. and just be there and just be open to receiving the love that he has to give each and every one of us. So, you know, um, you know, very thankful for, you know, where God has brought me to this point. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm still patiently waiting to restore the relationship with my son. You know, that's something that's difficult for me to go through each and every day, you know. You know but I know that God has a, a plan in place to allow that to happen one day. And so I just continue to 
do the things that the Word tells me to do each and every day and just to be a servant to Him in everything that Amen. I do. So I, I'm Amen. very gracious and thank you for each and every one for letting me share because this is really you know, a blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I wonder if we could just take one minute before we uh, before we go into open sharing. If we could just take a minute, would anyone be willing to come up here and pray? Uh, just gather around Tim and pray for him and his his son that they could uh, that they could have their relationship restored. Would anyone be willing to come on up here? Let's just slide this on up here. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Of course. Powerful testimony. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. We praise God. Thank you. Anyone like to lead off? <laughs> Father, we gather here as men, just hearing the story of this man's life and all the things that he has gone through. And Father, asking to have a relationship restored yet with his son. Father, I know that all things are possible in your hands, and he is looking to follow you. So, Father, just lead him where he needs to go. Give him the patience that he's going to need and help him as he follows you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Tim, his willingness to share. And, and Lord, we thank you for what you've done in his life, for the freedom that he's walking in. Lord, the evidence of your goodness is all over his life. So thank you so much for, for being that, for being his refuge, his rock. Uh, he, he spoke tonight about... Uh, being content in that place where he can be still with you, and we're just so thankful, Lord, that you can, that that he can uh, totally lay down his life for you, Lord, and that he can look to you as the author and finisher and perfecter of his faith, and Lord, and be content there. So we thank you for what you're doing in his life, and Lord, his uh, the desire of Tim's heart is that his relationship with his son be restored. So God, we just. We lift up him and his son tonight, God, and we just pray for restoration. We pray, God, that if it is your will, that you would bring them back together again. And uh, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the scripture, Lord, that says that if you turn to me, turn back to me, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have have, have eaten. And Lord, he's we know that we know that Tim loves you, and that all things work out according to your will for the sake of those who love you. So, Lord, we're we're, uh, we're calling on you and lifting this petition up to you, Lord, for the sake of Tim and his son. So we pray for your will to be done. Father, we just pray for Tim here. They can walk worthy of, of, uh, of his calling, of, of your hand upon his life. We pray that it may increase more and more as he's walking more and more freedom with you, Father. And especially the years that Lucas, the enemy has taken, that you restore those years. We pronounce that on his life that those years will be abundantly increased. Just uh, abundantly give him life, Father. And that he can experience your mercy and your grace and your peace in ways he's never had before. And Father, we just pray your hand upon him that he can walk in freedom as you have called him a, a precious son of yours, Father. And I just pray this in Jesus' name. Father God, I just thank you for Tim. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for uh, the inspiration that he is in my life and uh, that uh, the, the divine appointment of us meeting in our paths closing, Father. And I uh, just thank you for his standing up here and publicly declaring that uh, his story, your story, Father, redemption story that uh, you have given in his life. I just pray that you would continue to mend relationships uh, in his life, that you would just uh, unfold your, your plan out uh, before him, that he would just 
uh, strive to go closer and closer to you every day, Father. Just pray that uh, you would just ordain his steps, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you that the Spirit of the living God has taken up residence within Tim. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, that that same Spirit that uh, motivated and sustained his grandmother all these years to pray for him without ceasing. Yes. It was barely a time when we and the family would talk to mom and she wouldn't be saying something about Tim and how she prayed for Tim. Mm. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every desire of Tim's heart yes. and mold it into the desires you have for Tim so that he may be walking in the joy of knowing he is following you in your leading. That is what we pray for him, Lord, that everything he desires will become those things that you desire for him. Amen. We pray these things in your name. Yes. Amen. 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 All right. No, of course. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hey, uh, one of the things that I thought of, we'll, we'll just we'll just open up here for a time of questions for Tim or comments. But one of the things I thought of as you were sharing was you talking about finding contentment. Mm -hmm. And that came on the heels of you talking about being a, an adrenaline junkie. Yep. And how you, whenever you got complacent, you felt like you needed to go and find the next thing to get your blood pressure up or whatever that is. Uh, praise God that you found contentment in Christ Jesus. I wonder, I wonder how many who are out there, um, even in faith today, who are still an adrenaline junkie, even in their faith, who are looking for the next big thing uh, without realizing that we have all that we need in Christ Jesus. Earlier we talked about the all-sufficiency of God's goodness, grace, and mercy in our lives. I wonder if we would just be content with that and, and stop chasing the adrenaline if, if we wouldn't experience some of the peace that Tim is walking in today. So we praise God for, for that contentment. I think about Paul. Paul said, not that I was ever in need or... I need my glasses. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. It is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. And what can we do? When we're content, for I can do all, all things. things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So I wonder how many of us, if we would just learn to be content in the place where we have surrendered in Christ, if we would feel the need to no longer chase the adrenaline of whatever that next high is, even in our faith. Let's be content and just look to the Lord. Amen. Amen Does anyone else have a question or comment for Tim? Oh, one thing I want to share, I, I, I meant to, to touch on Romans 5, because I spoke about endurance before I, you know, one of my stories, and, you know, in that, it talks about, you know, how endurance leads to character, and then through character, there's hope, and, you know, that's something that I think each and every one of us can really relate to, because, you know, as we go out and proclaim our faith, people are admired that we can get through things and still have joy in the trials that we face, and so, you know, you know, if you have the time, go and read that verse, and I think you know, each and every one of us can take from that because you know, you know, our godly character speaks of the hope that we have in each and every one of our lives, and you know, that's something that I, you know, I, when I read that passage, it really, you know, spoke to me in that, mm -hmm. that way. So, which passage was that again? Romans five, uh, one through one five. Through five, yep. right? Five, one through five. Yeah, one through five. Five is God's number of grace. That's right. And it's uh, five verses about grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sounds, uh, like, sounds like you're going to have one of your prayers answered, too, about meeting your dad outside of prison. Yeah, that will be answered. <laughs> Amen. 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 Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Sorry, Kevin, I didn't bring you in on camera. Oh, no worries. I don't want to be on the camera. Are you sure? Yeah, man. Sure. Derek? <laughs> All right, guys, anyone else have a question or comment for Tim? A takeaway? Is everyone content? When, when did you start experiencing like true life in Christ, like a relationship, being able to communicate with Christ or with your Heavenly Father? It was, it was probably after the time where they told me I couldn't see my son because that's the relationship I wanted more than anything else. And so 
I had to, I had to look the. <laughs> I, I kind of, you know, that, that was a time where I really had to pursue Jesus with everything in that relationship that I was missing because I'm like, what, what, what greater relationship can you have with your son than that? I looked to, to Jesus. I was like, well, that's, that's everything I need because, you know, God's never going to let me down. My son probably will. So, you know, that's, that's where I, you know, that desire. Yeah. I appreciate your thoughts on peace. Yeah. I mean, from what you were saying being an adrenaline junkie mm -hmm. to finding peace in painting because painting is boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were hard feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would I would hire you that way. But no, for, I don't enjoy the painting, but if you, need, if you need to sit down and relax, <laughs> yeah. painting is a good way to relax. So it is, yeah. quite interesting to found that piece yeah. in there. I'm not sure the I kind don't. of painting you have in mind and the kind of painting <laughs> yeah. you yeah. do yeah. are yeah. quite yeah. the same thing. <laughs> 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 a painting is rewarding, regardless how, how, many many how, many how you do it. I want to see How many colors? 4,500. 4,500 colors? I guess that's a lot. <laughs> Tony, what do you got for us? Uh, painting and an adrenaline rush to not go painting. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you listen to heavy metal music. That's right. right. Paint Bali. <laughs> All right. How, how do you find, like, you mentioned in, that you read a devotion at a point. I just, my mind is caught. I think God might be able to hear that because that would be helpful in my journey. But how do you, like, can you give us a taste of discipleship now? Like, how do you structure your day, your life, just to keep yourself fed and full with Christ? Well, first of all, you got to count the blessings that you have each and every day. Because if you don't go and give glory, praise and glory to God first thing in the morning, you know, how are you going to go through the rest of the day and be thankful for, you know, what, whatever comes into your day? And so that's the first thing I need to do each and every day. And, you know, I, I, I really love this book that I got because there's, there's prayers that are laid out and it speaks about those things that we need to um, just be grateful for that we may overlook in each and every one of our lives. It may be something small that would be like, oh, I didn't even know that God was doing that in my life. And you just kind of have to stay, take a step back and say, hey, you know, this is something I can give him praise and glory for, so. Is, is working with Joe one of those? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know if that's one there, but no. Okay. It's kind of like what you said, you know, when your father died, yeah. you, you had a bad day. Yeah, was, Everybody had a kind of what we were talking about before. When you decided you wanted to take a day off mm -hmm. because you wanted to go deal with the pain, mm -hmm. and your boss tells you you need to come to work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what we're talking about. You can't can't focus on the negative and you needed to go to work he was right you needed to focus on something else and that's kind of what we were talking about you can't keep focusing on the negative you've got to fill it with something else you have to okay. that's right and if you're going to waste your time trying to beat it yourself like we were saying you're, you're not going to do it then only jesus can save you from that that's right you need to focus on something else and Gary was right you needed to go to work or everybody got up yeah. and you would have been trying to defeat it on your own and it wouldn't happen yeah. wouldn't have happened yeah. you need to find something else to focus on exactly right and if it was painting that gave you that piece to be able to focus that's perfect yeah. whatever it takes to do that <coughs> Yeah. He focuses a lot trying to keep up with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can have a much easier It's a highly competitive company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does anyone else have any questions or comments for Tim before we close out the live? All right, let's give Tim a round of applause. Thank you so much, Tim. <laughs> All right, guys. I just noticed. I just noticed here that uh, you guys all remember Jason Fisher, right? Yeah, yeah. Jason Fisher said, "God bless you guys." So everyone say hello to Jason. Hello, Fish. Hi, Jason. Jason. Hey, Jason. And then uh, Patricia Shaw from uh, Lighthouse sends us a big heart. So say hello to Patricia. Yeah. And we have Mandy Wright. Derek's love says, God bless you, Tim. 
So we love you, Mandy. Thank you. Everybody say good night to everyone. Good night, good night everybody. everybody. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Please do come back and join us next week at 8 p.m. Uh, right here on Facebook Live. Uh, we have Brian Metzler uh, from Effort of Church of the Brethren. He's going to be with us and sharing his heart next week. So please do come out and join us. And uh, again, uh, Wednesday night, men's campfire prayer meeting at 110 East Main Street. Um, and if anyone has a request, please do reach out to me um, or put it in the comments on the live so that we can cover you in prayer. And uh, I think that's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you all. Have a good night.